Hello, and welcome to the second in a four-part podcast for Cycles of Matter and Energy. This is the second portion of the chemistry part of the standard, covering Chapter 2. In this podcast, we'll be covering ions, isotopes, the chemistry of carbon, and macromolecules. For Kalani High School, this is the Allaire Report, and I'm your host, Mr. Allaire. In the previous podcast, we discussed how atoms are electrically neutral because they have equal numbers of protons and electrons. Well, electrons are an interesting subatomic particle because they can be gained or lost. And when an atom gains or loses electrons, it ceases being an atom and instead becomes an ion. Gaining or losing electrons changes the balance between the number of protons and the number of electrons. If electrons are gained, the ion has a negative charge. That's because there's now going to be more electrons than protons. In other words, more negative charges than positive charges. When electrons are lost, the ion has a positive charge. In this case, there are more protons than electrons, more positive charges than negative charges. So why are ions so important? Well, without ions, there would be no chemical compounds. And without chemical compounds, there would be no life. No plants, no animals, no human beings, cats, dogs, wolverines, poison ivy, or anything else like that. Now isotopes, on the other hand, involve a different subatomic particle, neutrons. Isotopes are atoms of the same element that have different numbers of neutrons. If you look up carbon on your periodic table, you'll see that it has an atomic mass of about 12. That's because most carbon atoms have six protons and six neutrons. However, there are times where carbon will have six protons and seven neutrons. This gives it an atomic mass of 13. On other occasions, carbon will have six protons and eight neutrons, giving it an atomic mass of about 14. All three of these isotopes I've given as examples are still carbon because they have six protons, but they are isotopes because they all have different numbers of neutrons. Now, radioactive isotopes have unstable nuclei and break down at a constant rate over time. This is called a half-life. Geologists use some isotopes, such as carbon-14, to determine the age of rocks and fossils. Some half-lives are short, some half-lives are very long. But the important thing to remember is that a half-life is a constant rate over a period of time. Now, as we said, Ions are very important because they help us to form chemical compounds. A chemical compound is formed by the chemical combination of two or more elements in definite proportions. For example, H2O is the formula for water. We can tell from this formula that it contains two atoms of hydrogen and one atom of oxygen, and they're combined in a two to one ratio. On the other hand, Sodium chloride, or salt, contains one atom of sodium and one atom of chlorine. This would be a one-to-one ratio. Now, the interesting thing to remember about chemical compounds is that their physical and chemical properties often differ from the elements that form them. For example, both sodium and chlorine are extremely toxic on their own, but when you combine them to form sodium chloride, It's a substance that not only isn't toxic, but it's something our body absolutely requires in order to function properly. Atoms and chemical compounds, like the ones that I've described, are held together by what are called chemical bonds. Chemical bonds involve either an exchange or a sharing of electrons, specifically valence electrons. Remember, valence electrons are the electrons farthest away from the nucleus of the atom. There are two main types of bonds. An ionic bond is formed when two or more electrons are transferred from one atom to another. This is a very strong bond and is created by the positive and negatively charged ions. On the other hand, a covalent bond is formed when pairs of electrons are shared between atoms. While this bond is fairly stable, it is much, much weaker than an ionic bond. Remember, Ionic bonds are always going to be stronger than covalent bonds. Of the 110 known elements on the periodic table, carbon is one of the most important to living things. It is absolutely essential to life on Earth. To chemists, 
carbon is so important that it even has its own branch of chemistry called organic chemistry. So why is carbon so amazing? Well, it's chemically amazing for two main reasons. First of all, it has four valence electrons. Remember, valence electrons are the ones farthest away from the nucleus of the atom. Because it has these four valence electrons, it can bond to lots of different elements. For example, hydrogen, oxygen, phosphorus, sulfur, and nitrogen. What's also really neat about carbon is that it can bond to itself. By forming these complex bonds, carbon has the ability to form millions of different, large, and extremely complex structure. This makes it one of the most versatile elements on the entire periodic table one family of molecules that absolutely depends upon these traits of carbon are things called macromolecules. A molecule is formed when two or more different atoms are chemically combined. Water is a really good example of a molecule. It's formed when two atoms of hydrogen are chemically combined to one atom of oxygen. Macromolecules are simply large molecules. How large are they? Well, some macromolecules may contain hundreds of different atoms. Other macromolecules, like DNA, can contain millions of different atoms chemically combined to create one gigantic molecule. These gigantic molecules are formed through a process called polymerization, and that's when large compounds are built by joining smaller ones together. There are four main groups of organic compounds that we're going to be focusing on throughout the year. Carbohydrates, lipids, nucleic acids, and proteins. So let's take a moment and take a look at each one of these in just a little bit more detail. The first organic compound we're going to talk about is carbohydrates. Carbohydrates are made from three different atoms, carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. Carbohydrates are the main source of energy for living things. Lipids, on the other hand, are made mostly of carbon and hydrogen and are used to store energy and also used for membranes and waterproof coverings throughout the body. Nucleic acids are made up of hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen, carbon, and phosphorus and are responsible for storing and transmitting hereditary or genetic information. Proteins are made up of nitrogen, carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen and are involved in everything from cell processes to forming bones and muscles, fighting diseases, transporting substances in and out of cells. We'll be spending time throughout the year talking about each one of these four organic compounds, but for now, we're going to stop. If there's anything that you didn't quite catch or anything that you'd like to hear or see again, go back, watch and listen to this section again, and that means both podcasts. Write down any questions you have and bring them to class for discussion. That's a good time for us to clarify things and discuss things as a class. As I mentioned in class, and as is posted up on the board, this coming Monday, August 11th, we will have our weekly quiz number two. And it's going to focus on the chemistry topics that we discussed in both of these podcasts. So my advice is to go back, watch, and listen to these podcasts several more times, and make sure that you understand everything. If you have questions, write them down, bring them to class. I'll see you next time.